Hi, hello, Amber here. So I thought I would take you along as I paint this forest of trees. We are going to start off with 100% cotton paper as always. and going to tape down four sides, all four sides as always, just personal preference. You don't have to, but it does help keep the paper to lie flat. And that is quite nice, especially when you're working a lot of water and spraying your paper often. I did spray my paper lightly. I'm going to go in with a kind of a lighter gray that I mixed up with some blue and burnt sienna and a little bit of granite from Masha. I just mixed on my palette next to me. I always like to mix on a palette to kind of see how much pigment I'm getting. I did speed this up just a little bit and some bits and pieces here. You can always go back in and slow it back down under your settings if that's something that you'd like to do. Also, I want to go ahead and say that you can also speed this one up. Uh, my voice will sound funny, of course, but you don't have to listen to the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I might even speed it up and turn on some music halfway through. We'll decide how repetitive it gets. Since this is all trees, I do want to talk about how to paint trees and some things to try and such things like that. But I also don't know that I can talk about that for 20 minutes straight. I mean, I could... But I don't know that you want to hear about it for 20 minutes straight. So after I got my sky in, I did dry it completely. And then I misted my paper one more time with some fine mist. I am using a liner style brush here to paint these trees. So with trees, as I always say, you want to practice. And this is definitely getting your practice in this piece right here. So what you can do is grab all the brushes that you think you might like. I like to start off with liners and riggers and maybe some sizes, size twos and fours. We are painting small. This is about four by six, just shy of four by six. So in my experience, I would be using a lot of riggers and a lot of liners and a lot of rounds and maybe some smaller mops if they had a very fine point. Anything that has a very, very good tip, I would put in the pile to try. See that little pile of brushes I have over to my right? That is what I would do if I were you. I'd go through all my brushes before I even get started right now, maybe, and I would grab all those brushes I just mentioned. Anything, again, with a really good tip and kind of enough belly to hold some water. And that doesn't even have to be a requirement 100%. I just find that it does work. As you see, I am dipping, dipping my brush often, so this one doesn't necessarily hold enough for me. I'm just constantly dipping, and that's fine too. So speaking of dipping, I mix up some greens. Okay, so here's the thing with greens. Keep adding different colors to them. Don't pre-mix your whole color and use that one flat color. Add, make a green and mix some orange to it, mix a little blue to it, mix another green in there and just, and kind of varying this with each tree, not each tree, but every maybe three or four or five trees, right? This back row will be kind of light. So I did stick with this lighter kind of spring green, apple green color. You could go with any color. It doesn't really make sense, the colors I chose today. I was just kind of playing, mixing with colors and nothing had to be perfect. And I wasn't going into this thinking it had to be perfect. And I hope you look at it the same way too. Think of this as just a practice as maybe something to kind of help train your memory into muscle memory, right? Into remembering what you're doing. And so it becomes second nature versus oh, wait, crap, how do I paint a tree again? Every single time you sit down to paint a tree, right? Or you get intimidated or paralysis because you're like, oh, no, I don't want to paint perfect trees. And again, we're painting so many trees a day that this is going to suggest trees. It's not going to be the be-all, end-all. This is the perfect tree, right? You are painting a ton of trees. And when you have a ton of trees in a field like this or a forest like this, you're not going to pick each one apart. You're going to see it as a collective whole. And so you'll see a forest of trees, your eye's not going to go to the really crappy one I just painted, right? Or something like that. So again, um, I do like this brush, so I don't switch brushes in this video. But if I were testing out my brushes, I would be grabbing a silver brush, black liner, black velvet silver brush liner, script liner. I would be grabbing maybe uh, a few cheap liners that I bought over the years that I don't know what I'm doing with, right? A few riggers that maybe the hair has always been kind of wonky on it, right? Try all those brushes that maybe you normally wouldn't try or that you've already kind of shoved off to the side. You're like, nope, not using those. Try them all. And, you know, also you can cut your hair, brush hairs. If you don't like the brush anyway, there's no loss. So maybe trim off a few hairs, maybe cut it down to the nubbin and you just kind of stamp your tree out, right? There are so many different ways to do this. And there's so many different videos out there. Uh, I would just re be repeating the wheel and most people are, which is fine because that's what we all do, right? We all basically take something somebody else has done and just kind of put our own twist on it and that's honestly what we should be doing. We learn from others and that's how we've always been doing stuff, right? Sitting around the fire, telling stories and learning how to do things, um, side, siding up with somebody in the kitchen, learning how to cook, right? Luckily now we have YouTube and Google, so... <laughs>
<laughs> YouTube's our buddy, at least mine. I learn everything from YouTube, <clears throat> really, really, truly, almost everything. And so I'm just going through with some water and kind of uh, loosening up the bottom ridge of that under those trees. And so the I'm not necessarily going for a misty feel here, but more of a kind of a negative space in between the trees, right? I don't want it to be green on green on green. I want it to have some variation. So I am loosening up that uh, watercolor beneath those trees again. And so when I paint trees... I am one of those people that I cannot not paint a line. So I paint a line down the middle. I'm drying that last layer, by the way. <clears throat> so I paint my line down the middle. I spray my water first. And it's just a mist, right? Just a mist. Just enough to kind of get little feathery bleeds. So line down the middle. Bounce my brush. Side to side to side. Not evenly. Not, uh, not perfect. Just kind of bouncing it back and forth. Sometimes they're a little too, too triangular just like this one, but I do try to stick in a triangular shape, whether it's tall and skinny, fat and wide. I do try to mix those up, always mixing up heights, trying to keep a mixture of trios and duos and maybe, you know, sets of five. So I'm always kind of mixing that up. And also we're getting closer now. So our paint's going to be a little bit darker. Did I go too dark here? Yeah, of course I did. But that's okay. We're again, just playing, just practicing. This was just kind of mindlessly painting trees since I hadn't really done it in a long time. And I was kind of thinking I wanted to watch a tutorial on trees and just kind of paint along with somebody. I really enjoy Jackie Peacock. If you haven't checked her out, she's awesome to paint trees along with. I have not painted with her probably, I don't know, six months. But I am craving to paint with her again. So I think that I will go check her out soon and paint some trees with her and um, maybe glean some ideas also or, you know, put a twist on my own way because I have been painting trees for a very, very long time now. <laughs> painted thousands and thousands and thousands of trees. So I don't feel necessarily the need to learn. Well, I do. I do. I do. I take that back. I do want to learn. Of course I want to learn. I always want to learn. So when I watch somebody like that, who, Jackie, who does things differently than I do, I like to paint along and listen in case she has little tips, right? Sometimes it won't even be a tip about trees. Sometimes it'll just be a tip about color or it'll be a tip about a brush. And so I enjoy that aspect of tutorials. So if you don't love tutorials for the actual painting and the process and the learning, uh, step by step per se, you can go and just listen, like paint along with someone, like there's a friend in the room with you. And that's what I really enjoy. And that's why I highly recommend tutorials, whether or not you actually do the painting or not. I know they can be very frustrating. I went through my phase where they were extremely frustrating and I just, I couldn't, <laughs> whether it was the person's voice, their style, their lack of style, their lack of instruction. And I know it, None of us are perfect, right? I'm more of the demo style. I'm not so much a teacher style. I like to share little bits and thoughts and I like to share encouragement and support and all these things. Um, but I am not the, okay, here we go, step-by-step -step kind of person. I, I assume you know that by now. There are a million places to learn a million different things and we all offer a little bit something different, whether it's a traditional learning style, demonstration style learning, or just a, hey, you got this. Maybe it's a combination of all three or 10 or five or whatever, right? I do hope that I bring to you a combination of all of that, but mainly I want to be here to support you and encourage you and just be that person that, um, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, I kind of stand by that. And also that is, this is just accessible and it's such a good art therapy. And it, you know, if you don't have a lot of friends nearby or you don't have people to paint in real life, which I don't, unless I travel or unless I go online, <laughs> right? I don't have anybody in my real life. So for me, painting with tutorials and doing these little things just really brings a lot to me. So, okay, I did dab off those trees that were getting a little dark. And so again, see what I'm doing over here on my palette. I'm mixing a lot of different colors. I'm letting ochre mix in. I'm letting some blues. I'm letting some oranges. And I just keep letting those kind of all play together so that I'm getting different colors. And you're going to see these trees are kind of all over the board. And I think that's okay. Is it my favorite piece ever in the end? No, it's not. But I felt like it was a a good practice just to in letting go and in releasing perfection and in kind of just doing something that I hadn't done in a while. And so it did feel good in that way. Uh, not so much in the way that I love the piece in the end. You know, it was kind of flat. It doesn't have a lot to it. But I still feel 100% certain that we can learn something from something all the time, no matter what, right? Even if we don't love the piece, even if we loathe the piece. Sometimes, especially if we loathe the piece, we learn the most. 
Uh, and I will definitely, like I said, try this again and paint some more trees and do different colors and try different brushes. And the only thing I would not mix up for me personally is the paper type. I would stick with 100% cotton paper all the way for these. Uh, the papers I love are Arsh. I love Baohong Academy grade. I also love the artist grade too. Uh, I just like the Academy better because you can use both sides of the paper. And so Arsh and Baohong are my two favorite for the other sides of the paper. I also love Meaden and I don't remember if I can use either side of the paper. I think so, but I'll have to double check on that. Uh, for swatching, I do love Leather Village, 100% cotton rag paper. That is my all-time favorite for swatching. And I do like the thinner stuff. So um, I don't love to paint on as much as I used to. Uh, I've kind of lost my knack for it. <laughs> you know, phases come and go. All of a sudden, you're really comfortable with something, and then you don't do it for a while. You're like, oh, okay, I think I've lost that. Now, how do I paint on this? And I have no idea. And so maybe my style has changed. Maybe my approach has changed. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm more wet on wet than I used to be when I was doing, when I was using 100% cotton rag paper a lot more often. It could be many different things, right? What I think I'll do now is I think I'll turn a little bit of music and let you paint along with the trees. Maybe I'll pop back in the end and wrap up, but enjoy these trees and let me know if you have any questions in the comments i'll be happy to help you happy to answer any questions i possibly can all right i'll see you in a little bit
to just barely 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 touch the tip of that liner to the sky for the birds i like the faintest little hint of birds and then i'd also like to add some shimmer because well let's just face it i add shimmer everything i do cover up every surface now so i use those three pieces of paper every time to cover up all my wood palettes i decided that i did not like the shimmer getting everywhere and it really does get everywhere it um and it's hard to get off that wood right and i don't know the brown the darker brown palette on the left i just wanted to keep nice and pristine all right tape pill and there we have it there's our forest of trees that is a lot of practice of trees and lots of different greens to help add some depth there i'm also excited to see all your forests of trees and to see how many you can practice in one sitting this might be the first time i have not counted i usually count and make sure i know exactly how many trees i painted <laughs> okay i will see you next time bye